first sea passage under sail came when I was 30 years old, in the spring of 14. I had signed on as hand in a British two-masted brig, one of the very last of her kind. We sailed from Liverpool on Easter Day. I was assigned to White Watch, 15 men, young and old, from all parts of the British Isles, with whom I lived, cheek by jowl, sleeping in hammocks. Not always at night. We worked four hours on, eight hours off, around the clock. The first day we spent training in port, learning to hand reef and steer. That night, the ship's company went to the tavern of Liverpool Dock, and when we set sail early the next day, there were many sore heads. My watch were on deck for all that first evening at sea. I took my turn at the wheel as we were running up the channel. I remember the lighthouses winking in the night and Formby on the horizon. We reached Dublin a few days later, having put in at Douglas on the Isle of Man the day before. Dublin was where my sister lived at the time, and I knew it quite well. We went to the public houses again, after which I had to stand harbour watch in the small hours. Returning to England, we were battered and blown off course by a fourth nine gale, and were compelled to pass two nights at anchor just off the Somerset coast where I had spent my boyhood. Here there was some drink produced, and those who knew them sang sea ballads. Well, after all our fears and alarms, we all ended up in the Cardiff farm. Stormy weather, boys, stormy weather, boys, where the wind blows, our brig will go. I'm a Bristolian of seafaring lineage. When I spoke to the captain, I discovered he was a Bristolian too. So it was that I first became a seaman, Nicholas Ball. So merrily, so merrily, so merrily, oh, master, no one on earth like a star.